so. You're entirely bonkers. But I'll tell you a secret. All the best people are. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back, and the used sailboat market is going down faster than the Titanic. I'll never let go. Now, if you want to get on the water sooner than later, and you've been planning to buy yourself a new-to-you, fancy-dancy used sailboat, you need to be paying attention to this giant market crash that is coming, and it's actually already started. So today, we're going to bang out some vessels, take a gander at them, see if some of them might work for you, and explain what you should be doing as this crash is happening if, again, you're looking to get on the water sooner than later in the most cost-effective manner possible. I don't have any money, dude! Okay. Now, before we get rolling, I do want to give a huge shout out to my patrons for only $10 a month, ladies and gents. You can get full access to my members area with hundreds of other members all looking to get on the water sooner than later in the most cost-effective manner possible, as well as you can come sailing with me on one of my numerous deliveries throughout the year. I've got one coming up in January from the U.S. Virgin Islands over to uh, Jacksonville, Florida. I got one coming up in February from the BVIs to North Carolina. Lots and lots of sailing happening, and you can come along. Just sign up to Patreon, get over to the members area, let's get to know each other, and let's get you on a boat sailing with me. Pretty simple, right? Now, before we even go and take a look at used sailboats, we need to determine where you are currently at. That means how much sailing experience do you have and what kind of sailing is it that you actually want to do? Now, I go on a lot of deliveries and I take new people on my deliveries every single month. And every time I do that, there is at least one person on a delivery with me who completely changes his mind. Once we get out there in the ocean, they just find it's not that enjoyable to be that far offshore, and they much more prefer coastal cruising and island hopping. And keep in mind, these are not people who just woke up yesterday and decided to come on a delivery with me. They've purchased themselves a consulting package. I've been working with them for six months, a year, sometimes two years. And this entire time, they're gung-ho on crossing oceans, and I keep telling them, wait a second, let's get you out there offshore and see what you like first. And as I said, this happens more often than not. So before we rush out and convince ourselves that we need to buy a blue water boat and we have all these big dreams of crossing oceans, circumnavigating and things like that, we must first determine without our rose colored glasses on, what type of sailing am I actually likely to do? Now, let me give you a little bit of a scenario. If you are, let's say, in your mid-50s, you're getting ready to retire, you have zero sailing experience, it is perfectly fine to run out and buy yourself a used sailboat and move on full-time and go live your best life. However, you may determine once you've done that, that like I said, you don't really enjoy the longer passages and you much, much more prefer the coastal cruising and island hopping. Now, the reason I want to kind of hone in on this at first before we go and look at sailboats is that oftentimes people are looking for boats that are completely outfitted for ocean crossing with having zero experience in that type of sailing or ever having done that. Now, if we go and look at a map, now here we are, we're over on a map of the wonderful world. Look at this, we're fancy. Now, as far as coastal cruising and island hopping goes, let me adjust this for you. Pull up a little measurement here. Let's say that you are starting in Florida just for fun, right? Now, as far as coastal cruising and island hopping, I can go all the way down to the Florida Keys. I can kind of loop back up around. I can go under Marathon. I can take off. I can head to the Bahamas. I can hit Nassau. I can go on down. I can do Turks and Caicos. I can pop right over, hit the Dominican Republic, keep cruising along the coast of the Dominican Republic if I want to. I can head on over to Puerto Rico. We zoom in here. This is where things get exciting. I can hit the Spanish Virgin Islands right here. I can hit the U.S. Virgin Islands. I can go over to the British Virgin Islands. I can keep on going down. I can hit Aguila, St. Kitts and Nevis, Antigua, Barbuda, Montserrat, Guadalupe. Keep on going down here. I can hit Dominica. I can hit all these other islands. Martinique, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I can shoot over. I can go to Barbados. I can head on down to Granada. I can hit Trinidad Tobago. I can cruise right over here. I can hit the ABC Islands if I want to. Kind of got off a of kilter there. I can go 
all the way from there, I can hit the coast of Venezuela, the coast of Colombia if I wanted to. I can go to Panama. I can hit Costa Rica. I can keep on going. I can go up the coast of Nicaragua. I can go to Honduras. As I keep going, I can hit Belize. I can go all the way up here. I can come back across. I can hit the Cayman Islands if I wanted to. I could do Jamaica. Boom. And then I'm back on the south side of the Dominican Republic. And here we are. Now, I've done 6,000 nautical miles on a trip like that. It's going to be more like 20,000 when you do something like that. And this trip here, you're going to visit multiple different countries all throughout the islands, South America, things like that. And you could spend the next 20 years doing this and never see it all twice. Every day you could go and see something different. You can hit the leeward side of these islands. You can hit the windward side of these islands. You can do so many things with just coastal cruising and island hopping. So initially, I don't want people to feel as if they are somehow limited because maybe they don't dream of crossing oceans or maybe you have dreamt of crossing oceans. But once you've gotten yourself a sailboat, you've just determined that, hey, I don't like those giant passages. Now, if we look at an Atlantic crossing or something, you know, we're going to go for Miami. We're going to hit Bermuda. We're going to cross over, hit these oars. That's only 3,500 miles. Now, our trip, coastal cruising and island hopping, was three times that, four times that, five times that. There is a ton of stuff on a sailboat you can do simply just coastal cruising and island hopping. There is no need. Now, if you want to, that's great. If you're pumped and you decided you like the big, long passages, fantastic. If you want to come over here to the Mediterranean and start cruising, that's amazing. Keep in mind the Mediterranean, about four times as expensive as it is cruising down here and all the little places I just took you to. So if you decide you want to do that, that's awesome. But initially, if you're brand new to sailing, I kind of want you to get away from that thought of I have to cross oceans in order to experience sailing to its fullest. Now, these little trips through the islands, you'll cover tens of thousands of miles and you can spend an entire lifetime doing that. And you'll have been to multiple different countries, like I said, experience a wide range of cultures, food, people, music, nightlife, whatever it is you like to do. Trust me, you can find it by just coastal cruising and island hopping. You do not have to cross an ocean in order to be a proficient sailor who gets experience and does all this traveling. So I want you to keep that in mind. At this point, you're probably asking yourself, Chris, what in the world are you on about? Well, the reason I bring that up is that oftentimes people think that they need to run out and they need to buy a sailboat that is completely outfitted for all of this ocean crossing that they've never done. They're not even sure that they like it yet. They've just seen YouTube and stuff and dreamt of it. That's amazing. But the only people that ever think that they need to buy a boat that is completely outfitted are novice sailors. That's the only people that ever think that they should run out and buy a boat that already has solar and a water maker and batteries and all of this stuff. More experienced sailors know that more often than not, a boat that's already outfitted is going to be problematic and it's better off to just buy a blank foundation of your vessel. Now, some things are great to buy. If it's already got an arch on it, fantastic, saves you some money. But when it comes to things like batteries, solar power, those things are very, very expensive at first. Oftentimes when you're buying a used sailboat, you're actually paying full price for those things already being installed. However, by the time you buy it, those are used items. They have dropped in reality on the retail market 50% of their value, but you're still paying full price for them. You also don't know how they were installed, who installed them, if it was properly installed, how well they work and things like that. And you're not actually going to find that out, unfortunately, until you buy the vessel and start sailing. A survey on a vessel, that's not some big in-depth, let's tear apart the boat, make sure everything was done correctly. A survey is just somebody coming on board with a little moisture meter, seeing if the boat's wet, and making sure everything turns on. That's literally the extent of a sailboat survey. <laughs> there is nothing to it. So when you're buying these boats that already have all this equipment, more often than not, and I've seen it probably 90% of the time, probably 95% of the time, all that nonsense that was installed on the boat, it's so fantastic and was just upgraded. When it comes to those types of things, usually they're trash. They're used items. They were installed improperly or wrong in a hurry. 
They've got multiple little bugs and gremlins that you have to wind up tracking down on the boat, only to find out you got to rewire the whole darn boat. So I don't want people thinking you need to go and buy a completely outfitted vessel. I don't think you should ever do that. Unless, of course, maybe you're independently wealthy, you're going to buy a brand new one. And even that's a terrible idea because you're going to lose a bunch of money. But I always think it's much, much better, based on my experience, for you to go and buy a vessel that is a blank slate that nobody's done a bunch of trash to. And you're just going to be tracking down gremlins on your boat for the next 15 years. So that's one point. And then the second point, you don't need a bunch of that stuff when you're first starting out. It's better to work your way into sailing, build up on your sailboat with your sailing experience, and then determine what features on a vessel are important to you. Now, I can tell you what's important to me. I like a large, wide open cockpit because I sail in warm climates. I'm outside 99% of the time. Air conditioning incredibly important and 100% necessity here in the Caribbean, in my humble opinion. With air conditioning comes batteries, and then with batteries comes solar. I don't really need a water maker because I don't use much water, so as long as my boat's got 100 gallons of water on it, I'm fine. That's just me. You might find you use more water than I do, and maybe you want a water maker. But the point is that all those features are very, very expensive, and you should only be getting the features that are important to you not the features that are important to me or your neighbor or the person online that said it was super important. I want you only to be getting features on your vessel that are going to be important to you in the long run. The only way to figure out what features are going to be the best as far as upgrades is to be on a sailboat and start sailing. And when you buy a sailboat for your first time, I'm always going to tell you, get yourself a marina for 60 or 90 days just to moot living full time on your sailboat. I generally will tell people to start here in the Caribbean if they're going to do full time because the trips are smaller and you can go from country to country in about 20 miles. So those are going to be some basic foundational things I'm going to tell you to do at the start. And then I'm going to tell you after that 90 days, we're going to go out. We're going to start making some little bit longer passages. We're going to kind of figure out what you like. And then at that point, we're going to figure out what features you need after we've been on the sailboat for six months or a year. I'm not buying a boat with a bunch of features and paying a bunch of money for a bunch of upgrades for a bunch of stuff we might not ever even use. So that's why I went through this whole spiel on stop thinking you need to cross oceans. You don't. There's plenty of stuff to do without crossing an ocean. And you'll do more miles anyway. If you do decide to cross an ocean, fantastic. If you're brand new, you got to work into that stuff. And crossing an ocean is incredibly expensive. Let's say you're a first-time sailboat owner. You want to cross an ocean. Fantastic, man. It's going to cost you about $30,000 to do that. Your boat has to be up to par. You've got to get life rafts, AIS, radar, water makers, batteries, solar, arches, all those things to cross an ocean. And that's just to get your boat ready to cross an ocean. Then you got to provision the boat. Then you got to pay all the fees for the different place you're checking in and out of. You got to do all that stuff. So in Atlantic Crossing, when it's all said and done, it's going to cost you thirty dollars or $40,000 because your boat's got to be up to par to do a trip like that. And it's better you buy that stuff brand new and install it on your boat yourself so you, that you know it's done properly before you go crossing oceans. Out in the middle of the oceans, not where you want to find out. Johnny installed his water maker improperly, and now you got no water for the next three weeks. Not a good place to be. Don't want to be out there and find out, whoops, these batteries suck and they don't hold a charge. And here I am out in the middle of the ocean with no batteries. You don't want to be in that position. So always, my opinion, buy yourself a blank slate and build it out to your needs. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen, finally, we are over on the wonderful world of yachts, also known as Yacht World. This is where everybody goes to look at a used sailboat. Now, when I'm over here looking at boats, you must keep in mind my idea of buying a sailboat and the ones I'm always talking about. These are going to be for full time live aboard cruisers, right? So you can do this for less money if you're going to be part time on your boat, things like that. But for me, I'm always looking for a full-time liveaboard sailboat that I can upgrade as I go that I'm going to grow into and not out of in the long run. So over here on the left, you're always going to see my minimum price is 50K and my year is 2000 or newer. Why is it like that, Chris? Well, let's take away this $50,000. We'll do price low to high. Let's put a minimum in of 5000 Okay, boom. There we go. And we're cruising. We got price low to high. What can I get for five grand? Get myself a Hobie catamaran. Those are a lot of fun. So are these. 
uh, keep that in mind. So if you're thinking like weekenders, stuff like that, these little boats are great. But again, remember, I'm always looking for a full-time live aboard vessel. So as we cruise on up, we're going down. Now, a 30-foot steel channel cutter. You might think to yourself, oh my gosh, that's the deal of the century. It doesn't even have a mast, ladies and gents. This is just a shell. Again, I'm going for full-time livable sailboats to grow into, not out of. Now, we've got a nice little Hunter here. This is a Hunter 26. It's only 17 grand, and it's a 2,000. What would this boat be good for? This boat would be good. You want to go spend a season in the Bahamas, maybe. You maybe want to take it down here to the Caribbean. You're going to really plan it out. You could do something like that on a boat like this, but keep in mind, this is an incredibly, incredibly small vessel that maybe for some people that don't require much, it might work long term, but the reality is you got no room for anything on a boat like this. You can't upgrade it as you go. You can't, you know, do anything with it. You got no storage on it. This would be a summer spent in the Caribbean type of a boat, and we're at 17 grand. Now, as we keep on going, we're going to cruise. And so you're going to see all of these. That's what all these are going to be. Some of them are just going to be dinghies. Here's a nice little 26 trailer sailor. Fantastic boat. Amazing. 2002. But again, what boats am I looking at? I'm looking at boats for full time. Grow into, not out of. Got another nice little hunter for 21 grand. Maybe a single guy wants to go sail for a year. Fantastic. Pick yourself up. Something like that. This boat's a one fifth share. We don't buy shares in boats because it's dumb. So again, we got some weekenders here. You know, maybe a season in the Caribbean. This isn't full-time cruising here. Not on these boats. Another 126. This is the boat I'd get if I had 25K or less and I wanted to get a nice boat. I'd get myself a Hunter 260 and I'd take that bad boy to the Bahamas and then down to the Caribbean. And I would just try to make it work if I was on that type of a budget. And I really, really wanted to do sailing. The Hunter 26 is what I'm going after. Not the Catalina 250 because I hate Catalinas. So as we go up, a custom Charles nonsense blah. This boat's going to be a train wreck. I don't care what year it is. It's going to be an absolute disaster. This is somebody's backyard build, basically. Look at that engine. I haven't even looked at the boat. Wow, disaster. Look at all the rust. Yeah, it's going to be a train wreck, ladies and gents. Stop putting on those rust rose colored glasses throw them in the trash we had 125 2007 we've gone up in year here so we've gotten a little bit newer again look at this this isn't a boat for full-time living not at all this is a boat for maybe maybe a summer in the caribbean this thing's too small so you want to go to do weekend sailing fantastic knock yourself out so as we cruise we're already up here in the 30k category chris where are all the boats at well all the boats are some dreamers dream that has gone by the wayside rotten in a marina and somebody's neighbor's friends cousins sisters brothers trying to tell you that they know of a 1990 1979 fantastic boat that just needs a little bit of elbow grease that's not true that's bull shiitake and you're never ever going to get ahead so in this 25 35 range we're looking at 27 footers for a weekend maybe a summer in the bahamas so we got a 2004 catalina 28 mk2 again small vessel we're all the way up at 35k right here and it's not a boat you can grow into versus out of we're going for full time live aboard sailing this is a summer in the bahamas maybe a season in the caribbean something like this get yourself some ac somehow make it work come down here live on the cheap fantastic is it a boat you can grow into no it's not is it a boat that can cross oceans no but do you need to cross oceans no but this small of a vessel, anything's going to make it feel like you're in a hurricane. <laughs> it's just super, super small. It can be tossed all over the place. But hey, you could make something like this work for that 35 grand if you want to do the Bahamas and maybe the Caribbean. You'd have to really get good at routing and planning your weather windows. That's a good deal. 2004, 28, MK2. And I hate Catalinas and everybody knows that. But that might work for you. Now, as we go up, we're going to hit the 30 footers. Things like this. Solo Sailor. Again. Caribbean, Bahamas, spend a summer, something like that. We're at the 20, you know, we're up at 40K already. Um, and so why is my budget 50K and above? Because that's when you start to get into things most of the time you can grow into, not out of. Now here's a Hunter 340, 2045K. Could this work? Absolutely it could. Hunter does a great job at their use of space. So for the solo sailor who wants to go full time, you're not going to cross oceans on this bad boy, but we already know you can do an absolute ton 
of coastal cruising and island hopping, and you can cover tens of thousands of miles on a boat like this. Single helm, but hey, nice large cockpit. You can actually walk around it. Got some room for guests. Throw a hard top on this bad boy. Get trucking, get shaking, get bacon. It's all the way in San Diego. So you got to think about Panama Canal. So that's a ton of money if you wanted to get to the Caribbean. So this particular one wouldn't work because you'd be buried in the boat. But let's take a look at size. Tomorrow, when we get to the interior pictures of this, gosh, dang, there we go. So plenty of room. You can kind of make this work. You're going to have to adjust some things. Lots of natural light coming in here. It's only 45 grand. Uh, this would be perfect for the solo guy, maybe even a couple on a budget who wanted to start in the Bahamas, start off the coast of Florida, and just make this work. You could absolutely do that. This isn't going to be a circumnavigating, I'm going to live on this till I'm 90 years old boat, but hey, this will last you 10 years or so as far as your space needs go. You can grow into this bad boy and have the time of your life down here in the Caribbean. But what are we at? We're at 45 grand. So that's why I started 50 grand, ladies and gents, because there's one boat in San Diego. Here's another one, Ohio. What in the world are boats doing in Ohio in the first place? Another little one in uh, California. I would take these Hunter 340s over the Beneteau 32 every single day and twice on Sunday. And here we are. We're all the way back up right at 50 grand. Again, Catalina 27, not a chance. Taking the Hunter 27. It's going to have more room. It's laid out better, especially if you're in that budget. Hunter 27, I can get for like 25 grand. Now, we're right here at 50. Again, we got a 323. I'm not going to take the 323. Um, I'm going to try to find myself a Hunter that's comparable because Hunter does a better use of their space in this year range. Now, the Beneteau 323, amazing. You'd have the time of your life on a boat like this. I hate this cockpit, but in reality, if your budget's 50k or less, you'd have the time of your life on something like this in the Caribbean, in the Bahamas. You could cover tens of thousands of miles. You could put some things onto it to make it a little bit more comfortable as far as living aboard. Next year, when I get to the darn interior pictures, because this broker's driving me bonkers, we're going to take a look at the inside. Uh, maybe tomorrow. Maybe never. There we go. So just your basic 30-ish foot sailboat right there. Plenty of room. You can turn something into storage. You and the girlfriend hop off. Go live the best time of your life here in the Caribbean and have fun. I'm still taking a hunter over that all day. And everybody knows I love Benito's. As you know, 31, same thing. These 30-footers were in that category. Bahamas, Caribbean, get the newest one you can, get the biggest one you can at that 50K or less range and try to outfit it to your needs. Now, here's a Hunter 31, 2006. I'm just going to go left instead of right. Maybe we can get to the interior. He tricked me. He did more exterior photos at the end. You son of a gun. Tomorrow, we'll see the interior. Maybe, maybe we won't. Uh, trash pictures. All right, broker sucks. Don't do business with that guy. And we're going to keep it pushing. We're right here at 50K. Now you know why I start at 50K. Blammo, here's the first page of what my normal search would be if I'm looking. So I'm cruising along. Again, we're not doing these little 30 footers at this 50K and above range. Right now, it's going to see a lot of price drops, a lot of new arrivals. Spring's going to hit sooner than later. We're going to get moving. We're not doing these little 26ers because if I'm doing that, I'm just going under, going back. I'm only going to try to spend 35 grand, not 55. Save myself that 20 grand and then kind of pump some air conditioning into that boat and get her ready to roll. Again, the 323, we're not doing that for 57. We're trying to spend 35 if that's the size I'm going for. Hunter 340, we've seen those. Hunter does a great job. Catalina 310, not in a million years. I'm getting myself a Hunter 320 or a 340. And here's our first one. We got a Genoa Sun Odyssey 37. A year 2000, it's already got an arch on it. Again, as far as upgrades go, if you can find a boat with an arch, that's fantastic. Saves you some money. It's kind of an ugly one. And it's a single helm. Is it the end of the world? Absolutely not. Get the features that are important to you. But as you know, 37, you could cross the Atlantic on this boat. It's not going to be the most comfortable trip of your life. And if you're brand new, you're probably going to think you're going to die in the middle of the ocean. You're not. You'll be okay. Just plan your route properly. But this boat has enough storage on board to kind of grow into it over time if you're in this budget area of 50k you could get this boat for 50 grand you'd have yourself a nice functional foundation for a sailboat that you kind of adjust things and grow into it versus grow out of it and then there that is and it's a 2000 so we'd have to check a lot of things standing rigging running rigging all of those things but again we're in this budget category this price range so beggars can't be choosers it's totally fine 60 grand is a ton of money are you kidding me and if you're going to live full time you want to get yourself the best foundation that you can 
so let's go look at the 37 on sailboat data really quick and see what size boat it actually is. And here we are. We're taking a gander at uh, sailboat data. Now she comes in a two cabin and a three cabin. What are we going to do with a boat this size? You guys should all know. We're going to get the two cabin. We're not getting three cabins and boats this small. So here's the actual size. 31 and a half and a 12 foot beam. That's your measurements on a boat of this size as far as your livable space goes. So if you've determined that you like this and that budget range or that price range is where you're at, it's not really budget because that's a ton of money. So if you've determined that that's where your price is at and you've been on one, you've gone and taken a look and you like the size, these are the two numbers you need to pay attention to. Length of the waterline and the beam. Now I like to keep my length of the waterline, as everybody knows, between my length overall, I like to keep it at less than a five foot discrepancy. This one's kind of at the top range there. We've gone over that. Uh, it's not ideal, but again, when we're working with this kind of a price range, beggars can't be choosers. And that's a nice boat. And you can cross the Atlantic on this boat if you decided to later on. But you look at that Sun Odyssey 37, you know, this Hunter 340 might be another candidate for you. Uh, this one looks newer. It's not, but it does just by the design on the boat. Both of these vessels are single helm vessels. Um, Hunter, again, they always do a great job, great use of their space inside, lots of natural light. And for 57K, if you could get this for 45K, dude, I'm buying drinks for you because I'm going to be so excited for you that you got something that is this nice. This has a fantastic interior for this small of a vessel. She's going to take you all of those places I discussed earlier. She's going to get it everywhere. Um, you know, so yeah, there's a lot that we can accomplish. Get rid of this damn double sink. I'm not coming on your boat if it's got a double sink. Don't ask me to captain your boat. You can't pay me enough if you got a double sink. Switch the double sink. So I'd be super excited for you, man. I would come on this boat. We can go jam out in the Caribbean. I'll show you how to sail. All those good things. For 57, I'd probably take the Hunter 340 over the Genoa 37. Because of all that exterior light, it's not going to feel as much like a cave. I love the Hunter 340s. And if we can get one for less than this under that 50K, you and the significant other head off Bahamas, Caribbean. Enjoy the best time of your life. We're going for a Hunter 340 currently on the used sailboat market if that's my price range. Now, why am I not doing a custom schooner? You're probably sitting back going, oh my gosh, it's so pretty and uh, it's so nostalgic. No, it's not, man. It's a darn nightmare and it's uncomfortable. It's going to take a ton of wind to get going. Your running cost on this boat's going to be through the roof because of what it is. Now, it's very pretty. I get it. Is it realistic? No. Get real, man. Look at this. Be a gosh darn nightmare sailing that thing by yourself doing anything. So now we've got some 133s, some Beneteau 31s, things like that. And we're just cruising right along here as we go up in price. Again, we got 131 going for the 13340 instead. Now this 2014 335 Grand Large. This is going to be like a partial share. Um, this cannot be for that price. This cannot be a... Uh, Okay, so it's a hurricane damage vessel right here. Portside transom crack let water in up to the galley line. Wow. As a result, the engine was replaced with a used Volvo, all wiring off the galley. So this is a boat. This is a salvage boat. Um, and this is going to be one of those boats. This is going to look too good to be true. Why is it going to look too good to be true? Probably because it is. It's currently in the Virgin Islands. She's been thrashed by a hurricane. That water, that water coming up to the galley... I mean, you are going to, if if this boat interests you for this price, because it looks amazing for that price, but you're going to have to track down exactly who did the repairs, replace the engine with a used engine, all wiring after the galley was replaced. She has a new fridge compressor and stove. Cosmetically, you can see some water stains on the cabinetry of the galley, but forward is largely untouched. Um, stepping down below overall impression is still good. The exterior appears to be, this boat's going to be a hammered piece of trash. Uh, I'm 100% sure of it. Where's this waterline stain that you were talking about? That's like a shadow. So where's this, uh, where's my waterline stain? It's in here somewhere, but y you're just going to open up a can of worms with a boat like that. This boat should be 25K. And again, we got the Hunter 31 doing the Hunter 340. Um, just prefer those much, much better. We can compare the two really, really quick. Let's do that really, really fast. 
So here we are. We're taking a look at the Hunter 31. What do we have here? 26 length waterline, 11 foot beam. Let's take a look at the Hunter 340. Here we are. We're taking a gander at the Hunter 340. So 28 and a half, 11.67, 131, 26.25, 10.92. What do you know? The Hunter 340 is bigger. It's going to be less money. It's bigger. We're going with the 340 if we're in this category. And again, you're going to see all these price drops. That one's a dumpster, so we're not paying attention to that. Catalina 310, taking the Hunter 340 over that, and here's why. So here's our Catalina 310. Not bad, similar to the Hunter, 26 and a half, 11 and a half foot beam, but I prefer the interior myself on the Hunter over this Catalina. This is going to be a personal choice if you can get them both for the same amount of money. Now, next year, when we get to the interior, um, all right, man, this guy is just, uh, you know, I should start a business on how to photograph vessels for sale. That's what I should do. Um, maybe on my next delivery, I'll do a mock-up of, uh, <laughs> what your picture should look like. So here's the interior of the Catalina. Now, why am I going for the Hunter 340? The Hunter 340 has all that natural light, remember? I prefer the Hunter 340 layout over the Catalina 310 layout. Not that this is a bad layout. I just prefer this layout. So here we are over the Hunter 340. We're cruising. They're both about the same as far as your livable space goes. Next year, when we get to the interior, once again, I like this cockpit better, even though it's a single helmet rounded. Prefer it over that Catalina's one. Again, we got a step through transom here. That's nice. But, you know, personal preference stuff. That's not the end of the world type things. Next year, broker. Come on, you son of a hoot. Let's go. Uh, one, two. Ready, set, go. Nope, not there. And, oh, there we go. So I prefer this interior. Look at this. All this natural light. Everything's nice and light. And then if I go to the Catalina... So which one am I going to choose here? <laughs> I, I mean, to me, it seems like a no-brainer. What am I doing? Am I trying to get depressed? If so, I'm getting this Catalina. Am I trying to be happy drinking pina coladas on a white sandy beach, palm trees and girls? Doing the Hunter. Makes sense? Hopefully it makes sense to you guys. So as we go along, so far, pretty simple. Hunter 340 is going to be the best bang for the buck. Right around that $50,000 mark for somebody that can get a boat that they want to grow into, not out of. Going to do a lot of coastal cruising, the Bahamas, the Caribbean, South America, things like that. I'm grabbing the Hunter 340. She's going to be the best bang for the buck at this 50K and under range. Now, we move up to a Hunter 356. Here we go. I'm going to just go left. All right. Going left. I was trying to go left to get into the interior. A wing keel there. Um, all right. The guy tricked me. 31 photos, 29 and a half are of the exterior. Okay. All right. We're, we're not going to actually... Oh, that's good. So now you show me the interior uh, full of stuff. Um, this is a two-cabin version. That's nice. These pictures don't do it justice. So I'll find a different Hunter 356. But uh, let's pop over and take a look at sailboat data. Here I am. Free. Website. Sailboat data. Two-cabin. Fan Castorifico. Now, I've bumped up a ton when I go to this 356. I've gone all the way up above 30 foot lot waterline. I got my 12 foot beam. So 30 and a half length of the waterline, 35.5 length overall. She's going to be the winner, winner, chicken dinner in this price range, even over the Hunter 340. Fortunately, this trash can gave me sh pictures. Uh, so hopefully we can find a 356 with some better pictures. Let's just uh, let's keep an eye on that there. I got a 325-2015 Hans. There's going to be something wrong with this because you can't get these boats for that price. Um, let's see here. You can't get a Hans 325. If you could, then this is the one just based off of the year. But I'm guessing something's up with this vessel because it shouldn't be 60 grand. Let me double check. So here we are. We're taking a look at the Hans 325. So we've got the cheap one for 60K. And then we go up to 82. So this would have been the deal of the century. Now, if somebody was paying attention and they were in that 30-foot-ish range for sailboats, 2015, 325. Again, as long as she's not a dumpster. And it might be. I don't know anything about the boat. And listings don't tell you anything either. But a boat that new, um, she's a really, really small one because she's a Hans. Let's go pull up the sailboat data. Here we are on sailboat data. Looking at the Hans 325, 28 length waterline. See, that's pretty nice, but a small beam. 
They dinged us on the beam here, ladies and gents, but for that new, uh, you can get 15 years newer, 10 years newer than those hunters. This was a really, really good deal. Sale pending already, but that was a stunning deal for about that new. Uh, that would have been the Coastal Cruiser Island Hopper way to go. Your running costs would have been really, really low for the next decade because of the year on the vessel. So something to consider there. Look at the price. Look at the boats you can start to get. Now here's a Bavaria 37. You can compare this to the Hunter 340. This is a fantastic forward B-berth. Look at all that room. So the Bavaria 37 Cruiser. Let's go take a look at some numbers. Here we are. It's the Bavaria 37, not the Cruiser, because that boat's not technically the Cruiser. So 30 at the waterline, 12 foot beam, 38 overall. Pretty big discrepancy right there, seven foot difference. Um, you know, this is going to be a personal preference. I like the light and all that, uh, all those hatches and everything on the Hunter. I'm going to rock the Hunter. I just think that they do a better use of space, but this V-Birth is nice and it's got some hatches. They've just got them closed like dingle dongs. They don't know how to take a picture. Um, but this isn't a bad deal for 60 K and it's in the United States. I mean, you can jam out on this boat. I'm not a giant fan of Bavaria in general, but that's just a personal preference. Doesn't mean a Bavaria won't work for you. And this is uh, some fancy, looks like a roll top desk. Pretty cool. So maybe one for you to consider if you're in that price range. Again, this 50, 60 K, I'd offer these guys like 55 grand. Like, what do you think, man? What do you think of 55 grand? Not gonna do any of these boats because we're gonna do the 100, 340, uh, or that 356 actually, now that I remember. And we're just kind of cruising along. We're not doing Catalinas. They make a terrible use of their space. This is Catalina 36. I'm taking the Bavaria. Bavaria, Bavaria is going to be a better layout for me personally. This is going to be a personal preference. But um, the 36 MK2, it's a 30-foot boat. Uh, and I like the Bavaria. I like the Hunter even better <laughs> over both of them. So I'm not going for that. But hey, maybe you're one of those guys that's hung up on the United States. And for some reason, likes the Catalinas. We all know Chris doesn't like the Catalinas. Another hunter, and look, we're already all the way up at 65k. Am I buying 27 foot Catalinas for 65k? Absolutely not. I'm getting the Beneteau 323. No, because the Hunter 356, I think it was, and the Hunter 340 are less and they're bigger. And in my opinion, again, what do they do? They make a better use of their darn space. Now we got the 34.2 Chano, not a bad boat, and I've covered this in other videos as well. I'm gonna go left, taking a gamble, trying to get to the interior here. Ah, you're all over the place. So I'm going with the Hunter interior, obviously. Now, this isn't bad. I kind of like this. I'd kick this table so fast. It'd probably make that boat sink. Uh, 133. I'm still going with 1340. Uh, I just like it quite a bit better. Going left. Oof. Stuck me with the outside. Nice swim platform. Walk through transom. Oh, man. Here we go. Got some interior photos. Do you know how to take a picture? No. Nope, you don't. So, again, you can look at that for two seconds and tell going with the other hunter now even in this range this hunter 36 this is almost 70k right now so you might be thinking to yourself i'm gonna go with 136 because it's bigger than the hunter 340 let's go take a look first and see god those are bad photos hunter 36 sailboat data here we come here i am over in the 136 now it's not the 36 it's 36 dash 2 there's a 36 but it's the wrong boat I've gone up to this 31 and a half, 35, 50 length overall, 12 foot beam. What was close to that? The Hunter 356, remember? So 30 and a half, 12 foot beam, 34 overall. So I compare that to the Hunter 36.2. They're going to be super, super close in size. So I've got a 31.25 length waterline on the 36. I have a 30.58. So I'm only a foot off. That's all I'm losing. And the Hunter 356 comes in for less money currently on the used sailboat market. So I'm taking the Hunter 35, uh, what was it? The Hunter uh, 356 over the 36-2. So that's why we're not going for this one. This has had a $10,000 price drop. This is a bit newer. That is something to keep in mind. It's not that much newer though. It's only a few years newer. So we'd have to really get on them both, compare them both and see what made more sense. For the 36-2, we still only have a 35 and a half foot length waterline, the 356, very, very similar, same thing actually. So we're only lose a foot length of the waterline. 
I'm going for whichever one's in better shape, which one's the best deal, and who is the most negotiable on those, because you know what I'm going to do? I'm hammering them both for about 10k less than they're asking, just to see what they say. So as we cruise along, we've already determined our 30-foot cruisers. We've already determined our 34, 36, 37. Remember, there's that Bavaria 37 in there as well. Now, we got a 2003 Bavaria 36 cruiser. This is down here. The Caribbean. We're hanging left. Boom. Boats in the Caribbean always worry me. Why do they always worry me when they're sitting out here in pictures on a mooring ball? Because I know that they sit out there on a mooring ball all the time. I can tell by the condition of this bracket for the outboard. It's all rusty. I can already tell. This looks like trash. Um, you know, this is somebody who's probably living in the Caribbean on the cheap. And uh, I'm guessing their boat doesn't get taken care of that well. That's my assumption. And one gander here, that's what I can see firsthand. So I already know that this boat, 2003 Bavaria, this is going to need an entire refit. I can tell. Three seconds, look at this boat. Yep, I can tell. Uh, and you can go down here. You can check. Equip with a blah, blah, blah. Oh, they had a new engine. 2014 for some reason. Um, sail drive seals are replaced in June 21. This is just a boat that's probably rotting out there. Uh, so that would be my guess. Oh my gosh, you didn't tell me anything. I'm so surprised. Uh, copy and paste. Thanks, idiot. All right, this broker sucks. We're passing on that boat just because that broker's trash. We're moving, we're grooving, we're shaking, we're baking, we're cooking with gas. We don't do the Catalinas, they're overpriced. Discuss that. There's better layouts for the same amount of money. They'll do the same thing. Benito first, that's the racing version. We don't do that because it's narrower. The 343, 2007. So we get a bit newer. The Hunter, still winning. The Hunter 356 is still winning. And let's go take a look at sailboat data on the 343. Oh my gosh, it's like magic. I'm over here. Two cabin version. Bingo. So we got a 30.83 length of waterline. Less than a 12 foot beam. 35 and a half. What is close to that? Boom, the Hunter 356 is actually bigger. So, we're going with the Hunter 356 over the 343. Makes sense. I'm sure that it does. They'll both do the same job. The Hunter's going to feel a lot bigger, and it's close in year range. So, looking for Hunter 356 that is in really, really good shape. Had some things done. Had some things replaced. And I'm trying to save myself right here, ladies and gents, 20 grand. 20 grand is a lot of money. So I'm saving myself the money. I'm not getting a 323. I'm getting a Hunter 356. It's got to make more money. This Catalina's stupid as well. So we're not doing that. The Oceana is 31. No, we're doing the Hunter 32. We're saving ourselves a bunch of money here. They'll both do the same thing. Trust me, save yourself the cash, put that cash into the boat for your upgrades. Don't overspend on the initial boat for no reason. Uh, make sure you understand why you'd be spending more money there. And as you know, 35, these are fantastic boats. But again, what have we learned by now? We're like, it feels like I'm 10,000 pages into Yacht World and it's the same thing. This is almost a separate stand-up shower. Almost. Two cabin. Tons of storage on the Chino 35, but she's 72 grand. Gotta save myself that 20 or 25K. I'm going with a hunter. Then I'm just gonna outfit the hunter to my needs. So now we got a hunter 380 in this price range. Again, I'm just gonna stick with that hunter, the other one, because I'm not getting enough, in my opinion, to jump up this much in price. Now I go up to a 38 footer, so let's go take a gander. And the magic is back. I like that arch, it's fantastic. Here we are on sailboat data. What have I done? I've only gone up a little tiny bit. I got half a foot in the beam, and then I got myself, what is that? A foot and a half? Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, I got myself math, bad. Foot and a half. All that I did was jump up a foot and a half length of waterline, and my beam went up half of a foot to go to the Hunter 380. Now, in my opinion, that is not a big enough size jump to justify spending the additional 20 or $25,000. I'd rather get the 34 and just kind of fit it out to my needs. That's why I'm not doing this one. And that's how to price drop. It's a right around the same year as that 356 that we saw, but I think I can get that 356 for quite a bit less. So keep that in mind. Now, here's your first real jump, the 361, that's a single helm vessel, the Hunter 356, it's better than the 361. I'll go pull this up really, really quick on sailboat data so you can take a gander. Here we are, we're taking a gander. 361, again, you might, you're better off saving the 25 grand, 30 grand, and just go with the Hunter. They're too similar in size to uh, be jumping up 
in this price range. You're going all the way up to 73 grand. You can get that 100 356 for 50K, 25 grand savings there. So we're not doing that. Now we move up to a 393. We're going to pull this up first on sailboat data. Here I am. Now I've jumped all the way up to a 35 foot length at the waterline and all the way up to a 13 foot beam. Now at this price range, I've gotten myself a few things. This is not it. This is it. So now I've jumped up in size, but this is where you've really, really got to consider things. This is a three cabin. So you don't gain anything with that size because it's a three cabin. If it was a two cabin, you did, but you don't gain anything with it being a three cabin because this jams up your salon here, but the boat did go up in the beam. Now, if you wanted to go up in that size and you've been on them both and you've determined that $25,000 is worth it because you're going to want to maybe do some longer passages. You're pretty sure of it. You want a boat you can grow into versus out of. Then the 393, this is where we step into justifying a jump up. But what are we doing? We're looking for a 393 that's a two cabin version for right around that 75K. We've jumped up 25K, 20K from that Hunter 356. Now we can justify spending an additional 20K because we're still going to hammer this guy. Uh, if it was a two cabin on a price drop, we're going to try to get it in that $60,000 range. In that case, it would make sense if that was your desire and that's what you wanted to do as far as sailing. Now, here's a hundred three, five, six. This one's overpriced compared to the other one, obviously, but maybe this one's in way better shape. Who knows? The only reason I'm clicking on it is just to show you the interior. And with that other one being so low, you should know that this year, all these 100 356 are going to drop into that range. They're going to be somewhere around there. So, so far, terrible photos. You absolute mother son of a hoot. Uh, we can't get anybody with good photos. But you know these are going to be dropping. And this is why you need to be doing so much research ahead of time. Because just like that Hans Thrifting, if you're researching and you're understanding which boats are going to work for you, you're popping over to sailboat data. You're checking out the numbers. You've gotten my spreadsheet, my ebook, wrong page. And you're trying to figure out things. You know which boats. You've narrowed it down. You've discussed with me. You've talked with yourself, your spouse. You're trying to figure out what's going to work the best. And now we know. So we've been tracking things. And if we've jumped up to a 393, fantastic then track those. These are going to drop into that $60,000 range. I'm 100% sure of it. Um, and we're not doing a 34 MK2. We also have the 381. This is going to be comparable-ish to the 393. Let's go to sailboat data on the Oceanus 381. Here we are. We're looking. We're cruising. We're shaking. We're baking. What happened here? Blam. I went all the way down to a 32.83 length at the waterline with a 32 foot beam in this case again we're only a foot difference roughly to that hunter 356 right here so i got a 30.58 12 foot beam the oceanus i got a 13 foot beams so that's nice but i only went up a foot and a half it's not going to justify that price that price difference okay the 393 will but not the 381 makes sense 381's not the one that you go for, and that is why. That's why I do these videos. That's why I walk through firsthand in real time with you the same darn day and show you exactly what's going to make the most sense. It's currently December 26th. We're cranking out this video. Now, we've also got the 36i. This is a fantastic boat. I like it more than the 393, even though it's smaller, but I only like it because of this swim platform. Okay. This one's been for sale for a bazillion years and something's horribly wrong with it, but I like this one better. It's a two cabin owner's version. I have a separate stand up shower, a giant place for storage. So I'm going to absolutely consider this one when the price drops into the Hunter range. The 36i, in my opinion, it's comparable to the Hunter 356 range. Let's go to sayable data. And here we are, we're cooking with gas now, two cabin, always a two cabin, 32.28, 11.78. So we've gone up in size from the Hunter 356. Okay. So this is one that you can consider, compare it to the Hunter 356. When she drops into the same price as that inexpensive Hunter 356 that we had found, 
Now the Honda 356 for 55 or 60K might be an absolute trash can, but it's indicative of things to come. These 356s, these are going to drop in that 55K range. And that's gonna be the best bang for the buck if you're in that price range. He's gonna get you all over the place. No, I don't work for Hunter. If I did, I'd sail a Hunter. Hunter, would you like to hire me? Cause I'd be more than happy to promote your videos. Just reach out, give me a boat. I'll pay for it. You carry the paperwork on it. I'm buying a Hunter tomorrow. Hunter, you wanna hire me? I'd love it if you did. So no, I don't work for Hunter, you goof troops. Now, did a video the other day on catamarans. So I'm not gonna cover those in this video cause I cover them extensively in my last video. So there's no need to beat a dead horse, at least until this weekend. Then we'll go over it again. Because I always have to go over things 9 million times. Now, we've covered the 361 Oceanus, the 36i Geno. The 36i, in my opinion, is much, much better than the 361 Beneteau. The Beneteau 361, I despise as a vessel as a whole. But again, that's for myself. The, 36, the 36i Geno makes better use of space. It's in the same price range. These 30, these 361 Benetos, these should be $50,000 boats by now. Um, this is not worth that kind of money. It's not bad, but it's not worth it. I do like these captain's chairs. This is comfy. Very, very comfy because I can stick my foot right there and I got a chase lounge. Um, I'm launching this table so fast. Make your head spin. We got some more catamarans in here. Now we're all the way up at 75K. So we already know. A Hunter 356 for 50, 55 is the way to go. The Hunter 340 uh, is also another one to seriously consider. There's a lot of the Hunter 340s, so depending on your timeline, it might make more sense to get the 340 now instead of waiting for these to drop. Again, it's a very personal decision. We know Catalinas are out because they make a terrible use of their space and they're overpriced for what you get. We know that if we're bumping up to that $75,000 range, we are going to do the Oceanus 393, right? Everybody following along? You with me here? Hopefully you're with me. We're doing the 393 if we've jumped up here because it's the only one so far that gives us a big enough increase in size and then with the ability of what the boat could do. You could get a 393 and you could absolutely cross the Atlantic Ocean. You can go all over the place on a 393. They are CEA rated vessels. No problemo, my friends. And now we're cooking with gas and we're cruising up. We're in the 80K range. Now it's big daddy spenders, okay? The Oceanus 50. This one's a hurricane damaged absolute dumpster. We got an Oceanus 411 for 80K. If this boat was 60K, we'd have a conversation. This boat's a dumpster. The Oceanus 411 does not make good use of their space. This boat has sank. <laughs> at some point, this thing's been totally full of water. Don't buy this boat at all costs. It's a trash can. Uh, this boat's set for cruising. Stop lying to me. You just lied right to my damn face, dude. Our current owners out of many any upgrades upgrades so an upgrade doesn't mean lifting it from the ocean and sinking um watermaker ac solar so you read this stuff you think it's already it's not exactly what i meant at the beginning of the video this boat's a dumpster trash can dumpster fire of a foundation you can tell i don't care what upgrades they had they're not going to be worth the headache this boat is going to give you no matter what that's why you've only got a couple of photos because it's a p OS. You might be asking yourself, Chris, what does POS stand for? Well, ask your parents and they'll tell you. Uh, we're cruising right along, not doing Catalinas. Absolutely not. We can pull up the 411 for sailboat data really, really quick. Just get an idea of size. Here we are on the 411. 36.92, but we crushed that 41 length overall. We want to keep that at 40 if we're going up in here. I did a whole video on these 40 footers. Go and take a gander at it. Uh, this one's not going to the 411 is not going to make the cut under any circumstances. We're not doing the 34.2 because the 340 Hunter is better. We're not doing the Hunter 33. It's newer, but I'm just going to try to find myself a 340 or a 356 that's going to be better. Just making sense, ladies and gents. And so now we've hit all the way up to 80K. The best one when you're up here at the top of this range is going to be that Oceanus 393 in today's market. And look, price drop, price drop. Why am I not looking at a Cape Fear 38? You might ask. Well, for this kind of money, I'm not trying to get a racer, okay? I'm trying to live full time. This is a race boat, ladies and gents. Race boat, not a cruising sailboat. That's why we're not looking at it. 361 makes no damn sense. Another 356. So 
If you like these 356, put them on the spreadsheet, start tracking them, call the brokers, start hammering them on price, figure out what's going to work the best. We've already discovered and discussed the 36 high. Now, the Oceanus 423, what's this doing? It's sitting in the Caribbean rotting. This one, I already went over this, didn't I? Or is this the same damn boat for more money? I swear I already went over this. This isn't a bad boat, okay? For 80 grand though, in the current used sailboat market climate, for 80 grand, I'm trying to step into a dual helm and I'm trying to go a little bit newer. 80 grand's a ton of money. Don't kid yourself. 80 grand is a boatload of money. But I'm bum, hilarious, pun, pun intended. Let's go take a look at the 423 on sailboat data. Kablamo, here we are. We're on sailboat data. We're always getting in the two cabin. Okay. Now, again, we got ourselves dinged here. 38 and a half length waterline. That's fantastic. We've gone all the way up to 43. So it's not a huge discrepancy, but it's going to ding us at that cutoff mark. But it might be one to consider. But this beam's pretty small for a boat with that long of a length of the waterline. I'm looking for a better foundation for my cruising. It's not going to be the 423. All right, ladies and gents. You're probably asking, well, Chris, what the heck is it going to be then? Well, continue with me. Follow along. Patience is key. And we're moving our way up. What's going to be comparable, ladies and gents? Something like the 379. I've covered this boat ad nauseum in numerous videos. The 379, you jump up into that dual helm, like I just said. You've got a, you know, great use of space inside. This one might be a piece of trash. This boat's been for sale forever. There's no pictures, my assumption. It's a dumpster. But what I'm referring to is the darn model. We're trying to get ourselves a 379. Why, Chris? Because she got dual helms, you goof troop. When I pop on over to sailboat data, I got a nice swim platform, dual helm, wide open cockpit, all those wonderful things. I'm getting a two cabin version with a somewhat hybrid separate stand up shower, large storage there. Now, I got a 34 length of waterline, 12.34 beam, but I come in under that 40 foot mark like we had on the uh, Beneteau 423. So my long term running costs are going to be less. That means Chris can party more on the islands. I can drink more pina coladas if I save money. Right? Not losing a bunch of money in space. I'm gaining a lot of benefits with the large exterior cockpit, the dual helms, the swim platform, things like that. It's going to be in the same range. Going to lose a little bit of livable space, but I gain all this exterior livable space, right? I'm going to take all of that running cost money that I've saved. I'm going to get myself a hard top dodger on this bad boy. I'm going to enclose it. I'm going to hit the beach and I'm going to drink too many pina coladas and then uh, call up somebody and ask him to get me back to my boat. <gasps> Excuse me, I just hiccuped. My apologies. And we're crew. It just hiccuped again. Give me a second. I got to get my hiccups together here. All right, we're cruising right along. Sorry about the hiccups. All right, now we got a Hunter 460. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Again, we're right in that price range for that 423. Okay. But now I've got a Hunter 460. Let's pop on over to sailboat data. All right, here we are, ladies and gents. We moved up to the Hunter 460. Is this going to work? Here's what you got to consider. So I do have a large discrepancy length overall, length of the waterline, but my length of the waterline is almost 40 feet. That means she's a big boat. I've also jumped way up in my beam. I got a 14 foot beam. What's this Beneteau 423? 13 foot. So with the Hunter, I've jumped up a lot. Now I've still broke the golden rule. My length of waterline is not over 40, but my length overall is. But hey, we're in this price range, okay? Something like this, 460, probably going to be the best in that price range. But again, myself, I'm going for dual helms, baby. Dual helms. But Hunter does always. Look at this beam. See, that big foot difference makes a big, big difference. Hunter always does a great job at their use of space on board. What the is this? A shelf. That's cool. So I reach in, then I can't get to all my stuff. I'm on the bottom. Awesome. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Good looking out. Said no one ever. Double sink. I just had an aneurysm. I need to call an ambulance. Uh, not happy. So great use of space on the hunters. I'm taking this over the 423 if I need a boat of this size. But keep that in mind when you're looking, when you're browsing, you got to pay attention to what you're doing, right? Here we are. Got myself, as you know, Sun Odyssey 40 with horrible photos. A worse dinghy. That's not even a dinghy. That's like a, I don't know what it is. Thanks for showing me the bottom of your solar panels. I appreciate it. You're going to try to pump me up and tell me it's got all this extra nonsense. I can already tell you need new running rigging. It's looking rough. You probably need new standing rigging, but try not to be too cynical. Next year, when I get to the interior of the damn boat, ooh, look, you're getting some corrosion there. You're not taking care of that. I bet that leaks, and I bet the coach roof on your vessel has a bunch of soft spots. 
Look at me. Now I'm a surveyor. How do I know that? Because I sailed my whole damn life. That's how I know that. Just by looking at the stupid boat. Not a boat you want. This boat looks like trash. And this guy's making me angrier by the minute with this many exterior photos. You have 111 photos, sir. And 99 of them are the goddamn exterior. What is wrong with you, you absolute idiot? Oh, it's Horizon Yacht Sales. That's what's wrong. Horizon Yacht Sales are idiots. Um, yeah, so this one, now again, like I said, in the 80K range, we're, I'm trying to get a dual helm vessel. Not particularly this one, because I'm already angry enough at the broker to uh, want to go play in traffic myself. So the problem with your nose in this vintage, this year range, look at your Bimini. This is like a jungle gym of madness. I don't know what how old you guys are, but remember when we were kids growing up on the playground, they had those half dome looking things all made out of metal. And that's what, like what we played on at recess. That's what this looks like. Um, it's a cluttered damn mess. I still haven't gotten to the interior. Like, is this guy joking? This guy has to be kidding me. What the f is wrong with you, dude? Get to the interior of the boat, you. Oh, my Lanta. I need emergency services right now. Let me guess your interior photos are going to be worse than your exterior. So far they are. Thanks for showing me a picture of an outlet. You. Oh my. I'm going to lose my mind in a second. I'm literally going to explode. I'm done with you. I'm all done. Okay. So maybe take a look at the Ocean as 40 as far as a model. Don't ever buy from this broker. Not ever. Based on what he just did to me. Absolutely not. Don't ever do business with that guy. Uh, and we're cruising right along. Now, we're getting up there in this 85K and above range, right? So I've just done videos up in that range specifically. They're on my page. They were just posted like last week and stuff. So I don't want to beat a dead horse that much. But all the way up here, now you know, 80 grand, what's Chris going for? He's trying to get himself a dual helm vessel, okay? The 50 grand category, we know what we're going for. We're trying to get ourselves a 100, 340, maybe if we're lucky, a 356. If I'm under 50 grand... I'm trying to get myself 127 to hit the Caribbean for a season. That's what I'm trying to do. I got 1380, but again, we're up here at this 86, 87K range. That price, I'm trying to get myself a Genoa 40, a Genoa 379, maybe a 389. These prices are just going to continue to drop. So once you're up here in this uh, budget range category, I literally thought that was me for a second. Um, once you're up here in this budget range category, you need to... Uh, it's not even a budget range. Once you're up here in this money, daddy of Warbucks category, you need to start being very, very specific as far as what you're after in this price range. Now we can get a 2011 to 4425 Grand Large in Barbuda with a whopping two photos because Dream Yard Charter is also trash. Well, let's go take a gander at this. Here we are. All right. So what do we do here? Same thing. Okay. That other one was bigger. The Hunter 380 is bigger, but you don't have the dual helms. This is a pretty, pretty big discrepancy there. Uh, decent beam on her. So not a bad boat, you know. Unfortunately, she's only in a couple of three cabin versions. But hey, maybe you got a kid. You need to bring the kid. Wow. This, the, these yacht brokers, man. We needed to, like, open up a Facebook page and just, you know, brokers not to do business with. And they're going to hit that market. Now, we start getting into a Hans 40. 2011, the BBIs. Look at these prices, ladies and gents. 89K. Okay, this boat might be a trash can. I don't know. This is my first time seeing it, just like you. But we got the Hans 40 footer, but it's a 2011. Look at that. Modern, sleek, clean, uncluttered, wide open, lots of light, airy. I love it. Oh my gosh, I just fell in love with this boat. Somebody buy it for me, please. It's Christmas. I didn't get anything for Christmas except my support from my YouTube audience. We got the dual helms on this one. The Hans 40, ladies and gents. It's at 90 grand. I actually hope Zach. Zach, are you there? Zach, I hope you're there watching. This is the boat you should be buying right now. Uh, as long as it's not a trash can. Uh, as I'm doing this, as soon as I get done doing this video, Zach, I'm going to send you a message about this boat because I bet you haven't seen it. The Hans 40. Um, Yeah, we're doing that. So now we're back up there in that range I was just talking about last week. That 90K and above. Look, we're starting to see some smoking deals. 2011 Hans 40 dual helm, wide open, luxurious. Are you kidding me? Every time I say wide open, I think of that Dixie Chick song, Wide Open Spaces. I don't know why, but I do. Um, yeah, this is a stunner. Let's look at sailboat data. Here we are. All right. 
Now we got the dual helm. We got a 2011. We got a 13, a little over 13. That's what I always say. Well, my beam's 13 and above. We got a 35.53, right at that 40 foot mark, so I can fit right into uh, your regular 40 foot slips. A two cabin version. Come on, man. This is the boat of the century right here. This is the deal of the deals today's. Sorry, I'm getting super excited. Like I said, it's the first time I'm seeing this boat. It's the first time you're seeing this boat. How do you do that, Chris? Because I do all my videos live, ladies and gents. I don't have to screen. I don't have to, uh, what do they call it? Script my videos? I don't need AI to write my videos. I don't need a script. I just start jamming out with you guys. I start talking. I walk you through my thought process. So you can see what a person who's been sailing for 30 years thinks of when they start looking at sailboats, ladies and gents. This boat might be a dumpster. Okay. This is missing its little ring right here. Uh, might need a new chart plotter. But this, ladies and gents... I mean, maybe it's a trash can. Let's see. Hans are known. You're an asshole and you just stalked me. Uh, there is a jobs list to do before you take it. Fair and fill in keel. Okay. New cabin sole and salon. It's warped from a leaking hatch. Is it the whole thing or part of it? Fair and paint port holes or replace. Okay. Fix leaky hatch. Okay. Service winches. Okay. Replace. Okay. Serving and rigging inspection. So call up and get that. These aren't that bad. If the boat's already in the hard, hire somebody and just deduct that from your offer price. Deduct those things that they said. Uh, deduct 10K from the offer price for the work. Deduct another 5K so we can meet in the middle. Yeah, my offer is 75K, ladies and gents. 75K is my offer. I don't see anything horribly wrong. Uh, those little issues, not that huge of a deal. Uh, uh, stocked me there. Okay, good. So this is the boat deal of today. 89K located in the BBIs needs some work Offer 75K. That's my suggestion to you on that boat. I don't know anything about that boat. Okay. BBI yacht sales can be kind of a pain in the rumble stiltskin too, but, um, that's the one that's the winner, ladies and gents. And you see, here we are just over an hour in the video. And look, we found one boat. There's actually two. There's that 10356 with terrible photos. But we found two little gems today, December 26th at 4.20 p.m. 2023. We found ourselves two gems. So hopefully this video helped you guys out. And I pump out content every day. So don't forget, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. A lot of you guys watch every one of my videos. You don't subscribe. Like, who does that, man? I don't get paid for putting out these videos unless you subscribe, okay? Subscribe to the darn channel. Leave a comment down below. Love you guys. And I'll see you in the next video. If you do need help getting on the water sooner than later, you can head on over to my website at chasinglatitudes.com. Now I do offer full consulting over here. Now there's a few different routes that you can go. Let's say that you're interested in a particular boat and you really want me to go in depth with you and take a look at it. You can get a one-on-one, -on -one, one-time consult. It's on sale right now. It's only $100. That gives you lifetime access to my private members area with hundreds of other members all looking to get on the water sooner than later. We will have a live one-on-one -on -one conversation. We'll discuss the boat you might be interested in. Uh, in depth, or we can go over several boats. Whatever it is you need, you can grab the one-time consult. Now, if you're in the process of buying and you kind of still got to narrow some things down, maybe you've had a previous survey that didn't work out. You're trying to determine like offer prices, things like that. You can grab a consulting package and this will be three different consults. So we can go over multiple boats. We can touch back and forth, lifetime access to the members area, all of those good things. This is currently on sale. It's only three seventy five, dollars And then if you're starting your whole journey, you don't know where to start, you need help the entire process, you can get the 24 seven complete package. Again, lifetime access to the members area. It's currently half off. It's only a thousand dollars. And I'll walk you through every step of the way until we get you the boat that's gonna work for you. Now this never expires. If you're not ready to buy a boat for a year or two, I say grab this now while it's on sale. That way we can do a whole bunch of foundational work over the next year or two before you're actually ready to buy. We can get you out on boats. We can look at some things. We can really, really get in depth and narrow down your search. We'll come up with offer prices. We'll go over the survey together, reduction in our prices, sea trials, all kinds of stuff. That's where you want the 24 seven consulting package. If you're really, really serious about getting on the water. 
also something that helps is my spreadsheet. Now, you get my number one best-selling sailing book as well as my spreadsheet for only $10. So I published a sailing book on how to buy a used sailboat a couple years ago. It was the number one best-selling sailing book out there at the time. So you also get that. It's only $10. So over my web suit site, fantastic place to go. Um, I've got a little bit of apparel up here, stuff like that. But again, what we're really doing here is we just want to get you a boat that's going to work for you. So head on our website, grab a consulting package. Let's get you over in the members area. Let's get started.